Hi, this is Mark from MC Media. Uh, welcome to our new vlog series called Origins. Today we're going to be talking to Andrew and Pete of Andrew and Pete. And they're going to cover how they actually got started in business, which is why we chose the name Origins. And they're also going to tell us about what it was like going straight from university into starting their own business and the challenges and the pitfalls of being young entrepreneurs and trying to get people to take them seriously. So, enjoy. So, I, I kind of want to get a little bit of an idea of, um, of your background and your history. So, um, could you just tell us about how you guys actually first met? Yeah, that was a beautiful love story. Um, <laughs> Our eyes met across a crowded room. Yeah, no, we actually met in... <laughs> That's quite worrying, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> say crowded there's maybe four other people in the room <laughs> um okay when we met we met at university on the very first day of uni we both went to lancaster so that was september 2008 eight eight, eight. Yeah. <laughs> a few years out to put up with this all the time <laughs> never remember when we met <laughs> um yeah it was basically just we got placed randomly in the same halls at university and I went into the kitchen and there was Andrew putting away his crunching up cornflakes <laughs> and as I said hello and basically he thought who is this person because apparently there was supposed to be a disabled person coming in and he yeah. was like who is this person walking in yeah because we had met everyone by then we had all met and we had told there was a guy that was in a wheelchair that was moving into the other room so then when Pete walked in, I didn't actually think he was the guy till no. <laughs> till he was introduced mm. as the guy. So yeah, that's when we met. So the the halls themselves, uh, mm -hmm. were they kind of geared up for, for people with disabilities yeah, specifically? Yeah, we got, we got the best flat in, in Lancaster, which was then voted the best student accommodation in the UK. So essentially we had like the best, best flat halls. in the whole of the UK. For students. Which is <laughs> pretty cool. It was really cool actually because usually when you're at uni you have you spend the first year on campus and then have to move off campus but Pete got to keep the flat for the whole three years so we got to stay with him for the whole three years as well so there was like a nice little group of us that basically that became our home because we were the first ones in it as well it was brand new when we moved in so after three years we had like properly bonded mm. not just us two but like the group that was there and we just didn't want to leave did we it was like yeah. our house we didn't want someone else moving into it no one else had ever lived there it was just us <laughs> so that that must be quite important that the fact that you guys stayed together for the three years because if you had yeah essentially been separated after that then there, there was so many people mm. that left to go live in town and we kind of gradually became less and less close and there's also people that did a placement year as well mm. that we totally lost touch with who we were really close with. Mm. Um, there, was a, there was a point where I was going to do that, wasn't there? Yeah, Pete was almost going to leave and do a placement year. And we, we even had like our whole new flat picked out, ready for Pete leaving. And I remember like us and our other friends that would, really didn't want him to go, but we had to be like the supportive friends. So secretly we were like... Mm egging him on to get no to fail. Fail. not to fail not to fail we were <laughs> we were um supportive but when he didn't get his placement we were doing like mini celebrations behind his back <laughs> let's put it that way and were you aware of that bit? <laughs> <laughs> but how weird would that have been if you had done a year then if you had gone away for a year then yeah. who knows so obviously you're living together were you studying together as well? Did you have some of the same uh, lectures and were you on the same courses? Or? Um, I don't think we were. I think yeah. you were in my lecture for a few weeks and then you realised you were in the completely wrong lecture, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I was, I was, was doing like was, double maths and it was like, and I remember like, I like I've done of, this before, mate. Have you, did, no, did you, you do this last week? And it was like, mate, you're doing double classes. No, and weren't you, I was excited to maths A level. 
So the class I was in was like way above your head, remember? Yeah. So I oh, yeah. think I was like explaining it all to Pete. Like every lecture, I was thinking, well, this I like spent a full year learning this. Why is he in this if he hasn't done anything? I so, thought so, uni yeah. was really hard at the first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we weren't really in any no. other lectures together. I did. Uh, I did management and entrepreneurship course. Um, but the first year I studied advertising and marketing. And I also did a side course in art, which, which is good for me because I love graphic design and art. Um, but most of my modules were always marketing. Yeah. And then I done business economics. So it wasn't straight economics. So most of my modules were economics, but then I got to pick other modules from the management school. So I could, I done modules in like accounting, in entrepreneurship, in marketing to give me a kind of a broader kind of um, skill set. But saying that, it's not that we learned, we didn't really learn that much from our courses at all, no. really, did we? We didn't really, um, hang on. I think from, from the courses that we studied and the skills that we've actually had to use in real life setting up a business, we've not really used anything. No. What uni did teach us was that we don't know everything. We, I think we went into uni like thinking of it arrogantly, like, I don't need this. Um, and it kind of opened my mind, certainly, to what was out there and how much I really just didn't know. Mm. So that was quite good for me. For me, it was all the extra curricul- cur- I can never curricula... Say that curricula stuff <laughs> that we done together, especially. Yeah. That probably is where we bonded and where we learned more of our business and our courses ever taught us mm. so we both ran the entrepreneur society in various roles in that we um done paid placements together with other local businesses and then we set up our own business at uni which is where we kind of learned our craft as such it's where we failed the most yeah <laughs> and what was that business that you set up it's embarrassing now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was maybe a little bit ahead of its time thinking about it. Mobile marketing hadn't really kind of kicked off to such a degree as it has now. But we sent text messages to students in busy exam periods to kind of keep the morale up. So it was either inspirational quotes or jokes or riddles or just kind of fun things. So it was, it was called Cloud Nine Texts. And it's where we, like Pete said, failed the most. But we thought, okay, we want to run a business after we graduate. It's much better to set one up now, learn how it all works, learn what doesn't work. Mm. So when we are failing, we've still got our student loan to feed us. (laughs) And had you always wanted to, to be in business before you even attended university I mean is is the background of your families do do either of your families have businesses themselves yeah I think we've probably got slightly different stories there I would say Mm -hmm. so for me my um parents my well my dad does run his own business still to this day he's a dental technician he's got his own lab back in my hometown Whitehaven so yeah I'd always kind of been around my parents running their own business had a great childhood because of that, a lot of good holidays, that kind of thing growing up. I always wanted to run my own business growing up. It was hotels, believe it or not, back in the day. I always wanted to have my own hotel chain, which is kind of really strange thinking about it now. And my mum specifically always kind of pushed me to do whatever I wanted to do. She always said, you can do whatever you want to do if you kind of put your mind to it. So I think growing up, I always had that drive that kind of ambition I went into uni though not really thinking this is what I'm going to do for a living after uni I kind of went into uni not having a clue what I wanted to do afterwards and I think it was just meeting Pete who also kind of had that kind of ambition and that kind of wanting to run their own business that kind of made me want to do it too Mm. So for me, um, I always kind of wanted to, I wanted to be like a really successful businessman. And I didn't know if that was running my own business or within a company. Um, my auntie, 
my uncle and my mum were all class, well, self-employed or entrepreneurs. So, but I didn't really, I never really thought about it that way. I never thought about it that way. Um, but yeah, they were, I guess I was surrounded by that entrepreneurialism. Mm, that business, without even realising. Without that. even realising. When I was deciding to go to university, I actually didn't want to go at all. I really didn't want to go. I just wanted to start my own business. And I thought, well, if I start my own business, and then three years later, I'm three years ahead in business and everyone that took time out, and I'll be less in debt. So I thought that would be a good idea. And then I was kind of persuaded by everyone that I should go to uni and um, learn to grow up a little bit. I think that was the best movie ever made because there's so much more independence there. And you met me. <coughs> and you met me. Of course, of course. Unfortunately. Did either of you um, dabble in your own sort of business ideas when you were at school, you know, sort of selling stuff to, to other students? Because that quite often seems to be a, a pattern that emerges from a lot of entrepreneurs. Mm, well, Any little stories that you're prepared I was, to share? I was a good boy at school, to be fair, and um, selling was against school rules, so that was completely not me to do. But um, as kids, I remember going to, um, what do they call them? Like the trade stores where you can buy like massive like quantities of things. What were them stores called? Cash and carry. Like, yeah, cash like and carry. Yeah, like the cash and carry. I remember going to like the cash and carry and buying like big boxes of sweets and selling them. Or we would put on like magic shows and things like that. Like tickets. I don't know if that kind of counts. I don't think it's kind of the same rags to riches storyline as <laughs> yeah. a lot of these entrepreneurs have. But yeah, <laughs> there was sparks maybe. Yeah. I, I would, I would, I wouldn't sell stuff necessarily, but I would always, um, I would, you know, like Pokemon cards, I would like, I would be a, a really good at swapping them and, and getting myself up. Oh, but you're point, hard at Pokemon cards. Uh, at one point I had three Imagine. Charizards. Yes. I bet you wouldn't let them go for the right deal. Oh, I know. But people I got some it. amazing <laughs> swaps with them. <laughs> but what I always wanted to do when I was a kid, I always had really exotic pets. So I had three tarantulas, I had two snakes, I had a leopard gecko, I had hissing cockroaches, I had stick insects, fish. Um, fish, very yeah, exotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the most dangerous of all, a dog. Um, but what I always said to my parents is, when you die, I'll make the house into a big pet store and then people can come and I'll charge them. And then um, people can hold snakes and stuff like that. Yeah, this does not die yet. It's a bit harsh. A bit harsh. <laughs> At the time, I thought they were really old. I was like five or six or something. Anyway. So let, let's fast forward a bit, obviously, from the school days um, and, and kind of come to the, the end of uni. Mm -hmm. and, and what opportunities did that present to you? And what direction did you decide to kind of go into after uni? Okay, so... End of uni, we were both super kind of passionate that we were going to do this. We weren't going to wait. We weren't going to get jobs. We didn't even look for jobs. We didn't apply for one job um, after we left uni. We thought we're going to put all of this, put our kind of all into running a business because if we're going to fail, now's probably the best time to do it. We'd, we hadn't heard the quote at the time, but I remember someone telling us, if you've got a plan B, you'll never achieve your plan A which is kind of what we did without knowing that quote, didn't we? We just kind of mm. thought to ourselves, let's just kind of go for it. Uh, problem or an opportunity, depending on how you want to look at it, that we had is that I was moving to live in the Northeast. My girlfriend that I had been with for quite a while up to that point was still studying at Northumbria University. So I was coming to live with her. So I don't even know how, I can't even remember how we decided to do it, to be fair. No. But it was just I think a it was case just kind of, of one day. I'm yeah. going to live here. Pete, he wanted to live with his girlfriend, so if I wanted to be in business with him still, I would have to move as well. And I felt like if I didn't move out and move in with Andrew in Newcastle, then I would just basically go back home and live at home. And then what would I do? I'd just be stuck in my house. And 
I always they'll hate me if they ever watch this, but I have I have friends back home and they're still doing the same thing now as they were before I even went to university. Like even in high school, they still like they go around to each other's house, they'll put on the Xbox and they'll go home. That's it, and they'll now they work rather than go to school. But then it's like, what kind of life is that? I they were always my inspiration. I never want to be like you. Essentially, Ouch. and that's really harsh, but essentially, and I had other kind of role models like that as well. Um, like an anti role model. Yeah, like an anti role. I have a few of those. Like it's like. I really just don't want to be like that when I grow up. So that really kind of inspired me to, well, one, go to university and be, like, move out of my house. Like, they still live with their parents now. And it's like, well, you know, come on. Time to move on. Mm. So so how, how important do you think, um, I mean, obviously it's massively important the the relationship that you two have, because as you say, you, you know, if you had separated at that point, God knows where you would be now. So it's been massively inspirational to stay together. But how important has your decision making been for you, Pete, because obviously of the disability that you've got? Um, and has kind of Andrew helped with that? Or have you just been determined to just get ahead and do it regardless? It just happens to be that Andrew's been along for the journey. Yeah, so I think my mum was more worried than me about moving out. Um, at university, she was only half an hour away if, if, if I needed something. But Andrew's like absolutely awesome at caring for me and not being overly protective and patronising like some people can be. Um, he knows what I can do and what I can't do and he's always there for me. So that, that's obviously a massive thing for me. I don't think I would have been able to move out unless I had someone like Andrew help me um but we have we have like a, a mantra in life because when i was born if you know this but the doctors basically said that i'd never be able to walk um i'd never be able to stand up i, I would just you know i wouldn't be living a great life basically and they said that at the age of around three to five um, it, I've got an extremely rare condition, so it took them till I was five to actually d diagnose it. And they said I was the only one in the world with my condition at the time, to that extremity. So throughout my life I've always had like tests done on me and stuff like that, even to Probed. this day. Constantly. So, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> so, basically, I can now walk. And that's just down to like determination, it's down to just going for it and not letting any limitations hold you back. If someone says you can't do something, it doesn't actually mean that you can't do it. So that's the kind of mantra we've had in life with everything, isn't it? So when I went to uni, that was a massive step for me. And when I moved out, that was like a, another massive step for me, going to Newcastle. Because in Newcastle, we didn't know anyone. We had like three or four friends. Well, not even friends, just people that we knew. And they were he, him, like, his friends. Mm. I didn't really know them. Um, I only really knew Andrew and his girlfriend. So we moved over there. We didn't know anybody friends-wise, and we didn't have any business contacts whatsoever. So at Lancaster, we knew all the strings to pull because it's like its own little mini community. Mm. If you want this done, if you want that advertised there, if you want to get away with doing some promotion at that event, you just talk to this person or that person. But in in Newcastle, we, we didn't have any idea, we didn't know anybody. Mm. So we literally just started from nothing. But we had that kind of mantra of, if you put your mind to it, you know, you can do it. Because you can now walk. I can like now you walk. missed that bit out, yeah. Did I not say that? <laughs> no, I can now walk, thank you. Yes. No, he, he did cover it's it. It's a miracle. Did he, cover it. <laughs> he did cover it, he did cover it. <laughs> Yeah, miracles. Um, <clears throat> but that, that that kind of mindset obviously has, has made you even more determined to be successful in business mm. as well as life. Yeah. D Andrew, did you have that kind of mindset as well? Or have you, has, has that developed with the amount of time you've spent with Pete? He's um, kind of proved to you that just go for it. Just, you know, think, no matter what the odds are, just have a bash. Yeah, I think Pete was a big inspiration to me. <laughs> Um, at university, he was the one that's kind of said, you know what, let's kind of just 
go for it. Let's do it. And I thought, okay, let's kind of, yeah, let, let's do it. So, yeah, I think I have always been a fairly positive person. Yeah. I think that probably comes from my parents always telling me I can do whatever I want to do. I've always been a little bit competitive, I guess, as well. So, I don't like... <laughs> <laughs> if I'm doing something, I'm doing it right and doing it well. I don't want to kind of come second at it. So, yeah, I feel like maybe we... Make a good team. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, though, because at university, they kind of um, indoctrinate you to thinking that you need a job. Like, mm. everything at uni is pruning you so that you get a job. Which actually, it's kind of a waste of time for us. But, looking back in hindsight, but, like, it, when I was applying for jobs to do my kind of gap year, that was for, like, experience and all this kind of thing. But it, in my back of mind, it was like, yeah, I should get a job, and that's what I should do. And then, I think it was Andrew that basically slapped me out of the idea. Like, why do you want to get a job? Like, <laughs> you've inspired me to not want to get a job. And now you're just saying you want to get a job, like, what's going on? And I'm thinking, what is going on? I'm being, like, indoctrinated here. Um, so uni uni was, yeah, it was good and bad for that. You didn't want a job. You'd made that conscious decision. Were the rest of the people who you were surrounded with, because you said it was the same group of people, mm -hmm. um, did any of them follow your kind of... No. No. <laughs> follow your no. path, no. no. <laughs> so they all... Everybody's, We're looking to get jobs, everybody's yeah. going to get a job or a placement. You know? Which is like fine, you know. It's not like yeah. this is the way to do it. Go and set yeah. up your own business. People are really happy in the jobs that they've got. Where it just wasn't for us, I guess. Was it? No, we wanted to. We wanted to kind of just go like this. Like we want to. We want to reach there, and the quickest way to do that is to just go for it. Yeah. Um, whereas. You know, if we got a job, we felt like we'd maybe go like this and then like this and then like this. And then by the time we're 60, you know, maybe we'll get to the point where we, you know, we want to mm. be financially and success-wise. Like financially, they were making way more money than us in the first few years. In the first few yeah. years. But I think we were kind of willing to not eat at the nicest restaurants or not go out every weekend or not buy the clothes we wanted yeah. just till we kind of built our built our audience got the experience we needed mm. so it is a sacrifice but yeah, it's not like, like I said before it was the perfect time to make that sacrifice we didn't have wives yeah. mortgages kids pets at that time <laughs> that we had to kind of feed <laughs> we just had to make enough to kind of feed ourselves <laughs> yeah so what what was the what was the vision? What business were you going to start that was going to give you this opportunity to literally, you know, take off oh like a God, rocket? Oh my God! How long yeah. have you got? <laughs> uh, well, to narrow it down, right? Yeah. We wanted long story short. Yeah, we had a billion different ideas, and that's one of the problems with us because we're very creative. We basically wanted to um, develop an app, and this app would make us a ton of money and it would help a lot of people. That's what we wanted. We wanted a really cool app. So our first year in business was essentially you know, like wasted, um, trying to develop this app, and we were trying to look for developers, we were trying to get investment, um, and it just didn't work. Mm. Um, we spent a lot of money on a website, a website developer, and they basically gave up halfway during the website development. To which point we were very annoyed. So we then reinvested, like we literally had like no money coming out of out of uni, moving to a new city. We're not. We have to pay rent now as well. We're not living at home. We basically reinvested money into a more expensive firm to develop this website, and they basically left us high and dry as well. So that's two separate companies. Uh, we didn't get any investment for the app. It was a complete like nightmare, really. Yeah. And we were doing like other little bits of things just to make some money here and there. But it was really tough, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I feel like it wasn't wasted though. I think yeah. that's when we realised what our passion was, which was 
the marketing, which was the creative side, which was the thinking of new ideas for things. That's what we really enjoyed, wasn't it? And that's why we had so many ideas. And it kind of was just a little kind of side project at first, just to make a little bit more money. We started looking at people's marketing for them. We started looking at people's websites, looking at their design and their branding. We were like really young at this point, like even younger than we are now. So we didn't really look about 12 now. Yeah. So. <laughs> so we didn't really have the the confidence or kind of the guts to say, yes, we are marketers. We will help you do this because we didn't, we, I think rightly so, we didn't have the experience at that point. But we just started helping people for extremely, we'll say cheap. I think it was cheap at the time. Yeah, prices. embarrassingly cheap. But we really enjoyed it. We really got a buzz. We had all of these ideas and we found helping other people with their ideas was like we had a million ideas to work on all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, they were like our businesses. Yeah, so every time we launched a new website or helped someone with a creative bit of marketing, it was like we got that same buzz that we got when we got with ourselves. So we thought, you know what, we, we can do this for other people. I think that's where... Mm. It took a few years to kind of get that, to kind of get that focus of what we wanted to do. Yeah. But when we got it, that's when we, that's, that's when, we when things of, started yeah. to really kind of take off. That's when we rebranded everything as just Andrew and Pete. That's who we are. And that's when people started to notice us, I would say. Yeah. Like the, we had like 10 different projects on at every, every point. And we would go to networking events was, and we would have all the, you know when people say I've got this hat on today I've got this hat on today that's like never a good idea because you're not known for anything so and that was an issue for us yeah wasn't it yeah the moment we kind of quit everything and just focused on one thing that's when things started to fly and people mm. started to remember us people remember us now to this day like a few like years later years and years later for the things we used to do at network <laughs> <laughs> get some attention of what we did. So. And do you think that, that that helped with obviously the the stigma of being young and in business? Because that is a barrier for a lot of people. It's like, well, what, what knowledge have these guys got because they're only such and such an age? Yeah, I think so. If you, I mean, we've done, we're doing a lot of kind of research on this at the moment, how young people in business are succeeding in this day and age. And I think there's a lot of benefits to being a young person in business. And we never, to be fair, I think at the very beginning, we maybe looked at it as a disadvantage and we would find ourselves apologizing sometimes for being young, which is never something we would recommend anyone do and something we learned to quickly stop doing because there are so many benefits to being young. So people will notice you because you are young. You can get away with a lot more stuff. You can be a little bit more cheeky. Yeah, maybe your inhibitions are a little bit lower. Yeah, um, you got more energy. You got more enthusiasm, more excitement. People start to want to work with you because you've got more energy and buzz than they do about their own business. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but a massive one is technology. Mm. Uh, we can pick up technology like that and. A lot of people these days in business are getting left behind because they don't know how to use the phone even. They yeah. don't know how to use apps. They don't know how to use Snapchat. They don't know how to use Facebook. They're worried by Twitter. And for us, we we do we do about 10 people's amount of, of work because we have a tool for everything. And when people come to us for help, we're constantly surprised by like the productivity and the amount of things that they're not doing just because they can't mm -hmm. and they have to buy and outsource a lot of technical skills whereas we can just get on and do it and that's mm -hmm. helped us tremendously and for other people like if we we're teaching digital marketing because we're young people will trust us more than like a 40 year old or a 50 year old teaching digital marketing because Hey, we're young. We're the whiz kids. We should know it. Yeah. People come to us asking IT problems, and we're, we're not IT people. We don't know that kind of stuff. But yeah, we, we can work we, it we out. get away. <laughs> people just expect us to be. Yeah. So we actually play on that. So if we'd say if you're a young business, play on the young thing more and use it to your advantage. And definitely. You've got to show it though as well. You can't just say, "Hey, I'm a young person in business. Kind of trust me." 
I think what we got right, and I think still get right to this day, is that we are kind of doing what we are telling other people to do. So we are blogging weekly, we are creating video content, we are being creative when we're going to networking events, that kind of thing. And I think trust was built originally because people could see the results we were getting for ourselves. Because yeah. everyone says, okay, I don't have um, a client yet. I don't have things, a way to prove what I can do. Where oftentimes you can be your own client. You can just do it for yourself. Okay, maybe not yeah. everyone, but yeah. no, oftentimes you can do it for excuse, yourself. Isn't it? Yeah. Everyone uses that as an excuse. You know, oh, I'm too busy to do it for myself. It's like, really? Like, that's your best form of marketing. Hmm. If you're a video producer create videos for yourself if you're a photographer get some great photos if you're a hairdresser no well, yeah <laughs> <laughs> no. but if whatever you whatever business you are you can kind of prove your own worth by doing it for yourself and that's sometimes the best form of marketing yeah people want if you look successful they want to be like you and then if you if you just basically say well you know, if you want to be like me, then buy my services because this is what's helped me to get to this level. So, so when, when you work with more established businesses and mm -hmm. when you work with somebody who's maybe a bit more mature in age than mm -hmm. you guys, not necessarily sense, but age, <laughs> um, how do you find that you actually break down that barrier with them um, and get that, you know, because they're, con they're conditioned in business. Yeah. If they're a traditional business, that they've got to do things in a certain way. How do you start to break down that barrier of conditioning? Um, so sometimes, yeah, I feel like you you highlighted a key thing there, like um, when you said sense, not age, and I think that is the key. So yeah. if somebody is on our wavelength, they're on our wavelength, whatever kind of age they are. If they're not on our wavelength, then they don't buy from us, and we're not chasing them to buy from us because yeah. we know for us who is a good customer for us we know who we can help if there's somebody that is completely against embracing new technology embracing doing anything kind of differently wants to be this wants to kind of be the same as everyone else in their industry because they think it makes them look more credible or more professional that's kind of their own choice it's not something we're going to be kind of knocking on their doors to say buy from us because yeah. you have to kind of know who's for you and it's almost good that you can leave that money on the table sometimes and say, no, thank you. That's not great for us. And maybe back in the day, there were some mistakes that we quickly learned from yeah, where we, we would, tried we to take on yes clients that weren't right for us because it's hard to get results for people if they're not willing to do what you kind of want them to do. But I think that's another thing that we have going for us is that we learn from mistakes pretty quickly. Yeah. So, like, we still make mistakes, like, all the time. But as long as you want to make them once, then that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's the important bit, yeah, yeah definitely. We, we, yeah. yeah, I think we would take on clients and, and really struggle. We would show them, and they, they want to learn. A lot of businesses, I mean, we don't just do digital marketing, but mm -hmm. a lot of people come to us and they've been sold that dream of the kind of online business. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're a very traditional business and they want to get into it. And no matter how much money they can throw at it, it's a case of if you don't embrace it yourself, you're not going to make it. Like, if they're not even willing to, like, go and tweet or go and use Facebook or write a, or blog. Write a blog, then they can't expect to make a lot of money online, particularly. Um, I mean, you can outsource a lot of it, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. And in this day and age, it's more about the person behind companies and the face-to-face, -face, there's a lot of trust lost on the internet, so a face is really needed, and if it's not you putting yourself out there and showing some personality and getting people to buy into you, and thus the online products, then it's going to be really hard, really hard for you, and the competition is only getting more intense. Mm. So. One of the things that, that kind of interests me from your perspective is because you literally went from university to being, you know, masters of your own destiny, starting your own business. 
you must have to deal with people who, are, who want to go from being employed to being self-employed and starting their own businesses. How do you identify with those people? Because it's a slightly different scenario in, a, in an approach because you mm -hmm. don't know what it's like to kind of be employed, if you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's a tough thing sometimes to be able to get into the mindset yeah. of somebody who wants to go from employment to self-employment. It's, it's interesting because there's a lot of training that they need to do, especially if they're just starting a company by themselves. As a sole trader, you need to do everything by yourself. So, you know, you need to learn how to tweak your website, how to use WordPress, how to write a blog. You need to learn how to do the finances. You need to learn how to manage your time. You need to learn that you can't just say, oh, Becky over there, can you just print this off for me because I'm doing this now and it's, it's just you and that's a massive shock. Mm. Um, and they don't, they don't know anything about running a business. They only know the skill, the craft, whatever they, would, they had to do. So it's a lot of education and training. Like this is what a brand is and this is how you develop your brand. Kind of. Yeah, I think it is education because a lot of people will come out of being employed and they will look to see what everyone else is doing because that's just natural. Everyone, if you're not in business, you're surrounded by it regardless. And that's where you're going to draw your inspiration from. So everyone will do the same things that people have been mm -hmm. doing for years. So they'll get the website, they'll get the business cards, they'll get the flyers. And then they'll think, right, where are all the customers? How do people get customers? Mm -hmm. That's my marketing done. I've got my flyers. I got my business cards. Yeah. I've got my website. Those three things. That's what everyone wants straight away. Yeah. <laughs> that, and it's it's like a, a, like a turn out side. That's yeah. all they see. So that's it's all they want. It's great if they come to us before that, because then we can kind of tell them, well, that doesn't really work in this day day and age for A, B, and C reasons. So you want an online business, and you've just bought a thousand flyers. <laughs> and you've just started your business and you've not really nailed down your services yet but you've got them on your flyer now with prices that's great <laughs> next week they'll be redundant yeah so do you think it's easier working with somebody who wants to go from being employed to starting a business rather than somebody who's been in business for a number of years and wants to <laughs> oh. get an online presence that's you know. a good question it how stuck in the way they are and how eager they are to get involved and get on with it I think. I think probably the majority of our clients are people that have been in business rather than are employed and looking to set up we do work with startups but I think most of our clients have a business and want to either take to the next level or mm -hmm. realize what they're doing isn't working or see that we can say hey marketing can be fun and want to have fun with their yeah. business as well I think it's a lot of people that have maybe done it for a few years and they're fed up and they want to you know they want to step it up they want to really reach the goals that they set out to they've mm. realized that hang on three years have gone by and I've not achieved what I wanted to be I'm not where I wanted to be and that's what we love to help people mm. uh, so the the aim of this series of, of sort of interviews is to kind of hopefully give people some inspiration to, to take either that step to go into business or to take the business to that as you've covered that next level. Mm -hmm. So anybody who was thinking of starting a business, would you say this is a good time to do it considering the economic climate? Um, or does it very much depend on what they want to do? You know, yeah. what, what advice would you give yourselves if you were looking back a, a few years? I got a great response to this. Yeah. So. No, man, <laughs> I'll let you take it. <laughs> well, when we set up in Newcastle, it was like in the middle of a recession. We had no money. We had no business contacts. We didn't have like any friends. We didn't have a business. We didn't have a single client. Um, and, you know, we just come out of uni, so we were kind of experience we'd never had a job really we've not we've not got the necessary skills that we needed as it were and yet we managed to succeed and I don't think it's a case of finding the right time to come out I think it's more of the mindset mm. so no matter what the situation is someone can thrive and someone can not thrive um, and I think it's a lot of mindset. You can spend all your time complaining about it. I know a lot of people that have been complaining about recent political things that have been going on. And it's like, well, just get on with it. Just get on with it and make something happen. That's what we did. 
um, and get on with it sooner rather than later. So if people want to find out a bit more about, you know, the dynamic duo, Andrew and Pete, where can they find out more info about you and kind of see what it is that you actually get up to on a daily basis? Awesome. Okay, so our website has all the links. That's andrewandpete.com. If you want to connect with us on social media, we are on the big ones, but kind of the ones that we focus most on are Twitter, which is at Andrew and Pete, and Snapchat, which again is just Andrew and Pete. So if you tweet us or snap us, then we shall definitely get back to you.